Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be a continuation in the Mars to Earth series, series that I'm doing. And we're pretty much getting close to the end here. We're back at Earth. Um, I did all the other recording yesterday. Didn't quite have time to finish the uh, rest of it, so I'm continuing with it today. The whole goal of this flight was to try to have our fuel planning be so accurate that by the time we got back to Earth, we would have basically no fuel and it's not really the case that uh, we want to arrive at earth with no fuel but it's just the case that we want to be accurate with our fuel planning so i set up the mission so that by the time i arrived at earth i would have basically only enough fuel left for basic rcs maneuvers and things like that you do need a little bit of fuel when you get to your destination um, it depends on your destination obviously if you're going to the moon or some other airless body, then you actually need a lot of fuel left over when you get there, and so that all needs to be part of your fuel planning. But when you go to a body like Earth or Mars, you can pretty much arrive on an empty tank and just have a little bit of fuel uh, left with you for RCS translation and things like that. So let's go ahead and switch uh, camera views here. And that's not the one I wanted. That's the one I want. And we're going to warp time forward to get down to the Earth. Um, before we do that, we can take a look at a little bit of a, a little bit of, we can do a little bit of planning here. We still have 0.7% of fuel in the main tank, and we have only 0.8% in the RCS. We actually, the, the fuel in the main tank doesn't do us any good at this point. But with that small amount of RCS, we would run out just, uh, you know, just trying to rotate the vessel over to get here, uh, you know, to do our basic rotations that are still necessary for Earth. So we're going to transfer all the useless fuel out of the main and put it into the RCS. Cross -feed RCS. That'll trigger a warning, of course. Cross warning. System depleted. So now we have 97.9 .9 kg of fuel remaining. And burn time calculator, we can see how much that equates to in terms of delta V. Uh, with the newer version of burn time calculator, you can switch engine types all the way to RCS. If you have one of the older versions of burn time calculator, then that's not available. So we have just 120 meters per second remaining, and I would say that's uh, pretty good for our fuel planning. Uh, you know, technically we could get we could get by with a little bit less than that, even maybe just uh, I don't know, maybe 50 meters a second. I don't know exactly how close we could cut it because again, we still do need. A little bit of RCS for the autopilot to work and for um, basic rotations. So let's warp time forward and let's get down to the Earth. And when we get down to uh, just a couple hundred kilometers, we need to turn on the APU to bring in the radiator and do a couple of other things. We need to bring our elevator trim back to zero as well. You don't necessarily want to go all the way to 120, you know, entry interface, because we're moving very fast. Uh, you could probably, I'm sure you still have time, but we'll probably start things, start doing things a little sooner than 120 kilometers. So there's 400. There's 300. And coming up on 200. That's close enough. So let's uh, start the APU and bring in the radiator. And I want to zero out that elevator trim, and I don't know if there's a hotkey for that. The only way I know to do it is to come to the generic view and hit that button in the middle, and that guarantees that it goes back to zero. Otherwise, you can kind of eyeball it here, but it's never quite right. All right, let's rotate heads up, and let's set up our autopilot uh, attitude hold. It's going to be negative 180. And we want a pitch that's going to be negative since we're since we're going to be doing this inverted. We want our pitch to be negative instead of positive. And we'll start with the 15 degree pitch. So what I want to do here first of all is I want to be heads up because I just want to zero out my uh, my vertical speed. You can see that my PEA is currently 62, almost 63 kilometers. That's pretty low. I probably should have had it at least two or three kilometers higher than that. So for starters, uh, to make sure that we don't destroy the vessel, we want to start off in the heads-up position and zero out our vertical speed as we get down into the atmosphere. 
where our PA is low enough that we probably will get whole temperature warnings, but we should be we should be able to manage everything. APU running. Uh, that's fine. I'm going to leave the APU running because the APU has to be on for the center of gravity shift, and I don't want to make some sudden change to that. And we got plenty of APU APU fuel at this point. So now we're getting down to the point where the atmosphere starts to become noticeable at this velocity. You can kind of hear it in the headset there. Uh, but we do want to zero out that that vertical speed, or not, not get it perfectly zero, but close to zero. And then we'll engage the uh, autopilot which will roll the vessel over and pitch us in a little bit, but then we're going to want to control our pitch to uh, make sure that we uh, don't descend too much and to make sure that we don't skip out. Information. AP yeah, we're going to get a whole temperature warning. Warning. Hull temperature. Yeah, that's a little bit on the low side. Warning. Okay. Hull temperature. Uh, roll over now. Warning. Hull temperature. So our vertical speed's increasing Warning. now. Hull temperature. But as we roll over and pitch in a bit, we'll start bringing the. Warning. Hull temperature. Start bringing the. Uh, but not too much. Start bringing the vertical speed down. Is what I was trying to say. But we don't want to bring it down too much yet. So now we just have to find this balance between braking and not overheating. Okay, we don't want to climb out either, so we need to pitch in a little bit, or pitch out rather, get closer to a 15 degree AOA. We can actually bring our vertical speed down a bit like that get a little bit lower in the atmosphere. Careful to watch our heating though. And then we can get more braking by pitching way in, flattening the vessel out more. But we need to be a little bit lower in the atmosphere for that first. Okay. Oops, that's the wrong one. we're captured and you can see what this looks like on the outside just the camera so we're quite flat into the atmosphere but we've got to watch our vertical speed because we can still potentially climb back out and we don't want that I'm probably not doing this perfectly efficiently, but this is the idea. There's pro I think there's a balancing point. There's like a point where you can get to where you can just leave the pitch set and you don't have to do any adjustments, but I haven't really done this type of uh, braking often enough to know what that perfect point is. So now I'm just gonna get, uh, now we're up here a bit higher, we've cooled off. I'm just gonna let the vertical speed get back into the negative a bit and then we'll brake more aggressively again. Because at this, at this angle, we're not exposing nearly as much of the bottom to the atmosphere. Okay, vertical speed coming down. Uh, we don't want to come to a complete stop, of course. APU fuel 90%. Because uh, we still need to land at some point so we want to make sure that our APA is still you know reasonably uh, reasonably high because I didn't do any base setup base alignment yet so we want to make sure that we can do a full orbit ok 
Okay, once again, doing a hard break, exposing a lot of the at a lot of the bottom of the vessel to the atmosphere. Hopefully we didn't overdo it, descend too much. I think we'll be okay. But that's getting really low. <laughs> Trying to bring the vertical speed up. So now we're down to 58 to uh, 59 kilometers. Might have overdone the braking, because I don't think I'm going to be able to pull out of this in time to have a 200 APA. Mock 25. What I might be able to do, though, I think uh, I way overdid the braking. You can see now Mach we're suborbital. And I said we were going to land at KSC. Let me see just how far away we are. Mark 23. And we're only 5,000 kilometers out. We can actually turn this into a landing. Autopilot has the elevator trim set how I don't want. Okay, yeah, let's uh, just see if we can turn this immediately into a landing at KSC. It's actually just a little bit of dumb luck that we happen to be passing reasonably close. So let's look at orbit real quick. Uh, it's fine. Bring up base sync just to see how far off we are from the base. Only 284 kilometers, so we can definitely manage that. Put in a little bit of bank angle here to uh, bring that distance to the base down. And now let's bring up arrow brake MFD. Target Cape KSC. And we've got plenty of energy to get to the base still. So a little bit, of, a little bit of dumb luck there, and I don't really like flying based on dumb luck, but we'll take it because this flight really wasn't about the orbit reentry and landing anyway. It was all about the uh, fuel planning. Let's put in a bit more bank angle to bring down that distance off base much more quickly. And we'll hold on to this velocity uh, for a while, get in a bit closer, and then we'll set up our attitude hold autopilot. Let's zero everything out. And let's put in some up elevator trim. That will help bring down the uh, distance off base. Don't need rotation oh. anymore. By kind of pulling the vessel, you know, this way, I can expedite the distance off base. That way I don't have to worry about... Mark 24. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about the... Uh, attitude hold when I turn that on I want to have that actually I'm way overdoing that okay yeah we're not really high enough in the we're not low enough in the atmosphere now to really get any benefit from it so I need to uh, bring down the altitude a bit
but this is why you want to have some fuel when you get to your uh, target destination if you don't if you have absolutely no fuel whatsoever then you're going to rely completely just on APU for you know for to have surface controls and that can get you into some trouble because the autopilot like the attitude hold autopilot for example it needs RCS to maintain uh, for it to be able to maintain its position 24 distance off base is down 200 kilometers and we're descending now But as I'm coming down through the atmosphere and descending, if I pull a bit, you know, if I rotate uh, to the to the right side and kind of pull in a bit, it'll bring down that distance off base faster. And we've only got 3,000 kilometers to go, so we need to kind of hurry that up, and then we will engage the attitude hold autopilot and coast the rest of the way over to the base. We're just 3,000 kilometers from the base. Mach 23. Distance off base is uh, almost zero. It's getting there. It's only 90 kilometers. It'll just take a second or two for that to get down to zero. Having, a, having your passage right over the top of the base just makes, uh, makes your use of the attitude hold autopilot a lot easier, in my opinion. Okay, let's get rid of the trim. And again, the easiest way to do that is there. Okay, we are just nine kilometers off from the base now. That's Mach basically 22. zero. So let's roll heads up. And let's engage the attitude hold autopilot just to see how much uh, angle of attack we're going to need. That's a little too much. You can see an arrow breaker prediction is missing the base. Mach 21. So let's bring that down a little bit. But to uh, part of the plan, probably, uh, well, it definitely should have included, you know, where I'm going to land at on Earth. When I was at Mars, I just really wasn't thinking that quite that far ahead. because I was focused just basically on the fuel planning. But uh, a good plan should include, you know, um, on the ground all the way to wheel stop. A little bit more angle of attack is necessary here. And we're only 2,300 kilometers out. Distance off base is now basically zero. And it'll take us a little bit of a little bit of time here to coast over to the base, but it shouldn't be too long because again we're still moving at six thousand meters a second. So distance off base is now down to two thousand one hundred and sixty. So we'll kind of hold on to as much of this velocity as we can. We're kind of according to the arrow break prediction, we're overshooting the base, but that's okay. When we get in a little closer, we can just increase our angle of attack a little bit more. Bring up this view for, for the uh, video playback. It'll show up a little better. Let me also load, load MFD and put that gravitational um, meter, not gravitational, the G-force meter up here so you can see that as we come in to do our landing. And I'm going to bring up Glide Slope 2. I really like this MFD for the sake of uh, landing. So we want to land at Cape Canaveral, and we want not the pad 1. So we're going to go PR, 
and we're going to land probably on runway 15 or 33. Um, I'm guessing based on the direction that we're coming from, we're kind of coming out of the north. So we'll probably land on 15. And if we want to see what that looks like, if we want to see the base, we can hit VB and we can take a look at our runway. And I think this is pretty well aligned to 150 degrees. So, you know, 180 would be from there to there would be straight south. So I think the way this is displayed in... Information. APU fuel 80%. I think the way this is displayed in this view is, is accurate to, the, to its position. So we know that when we arrive at... KSC, we want to be kind of up to the north and and over. We don't want it to. We don't want. We don't want to arrive like down here, because then we would have a you know cross section to the runway. And for runway landings, I like the H sit screen the best. I think it stands for horizontal situation. And this kind of tells us how far off we are one way or the other. And we can do. Um, attitude adjustments if necessary. So according to this, we're we're a bit off to the right. You can see this little left, or this little carrot symbol, this little like control symbol is off to the left of our straight line. So if we put in a little bit of left bank, because this is the way we need to go, we need to go that way. So if we put in a little bit of left bank, we can bring this closer to the center. Mock. 17. And for the hack, I'm going to put it on open. And we're only 1,000 kilometers out at this point. You can see our, our G-force is 1.2. Put a little more bank angle here. Mock 16. Basically, if you fly this line, it will take you straight to the runway. You know, it's really convenient. Because when you're coming in for landings uh, from orbit, you know, you're like this. You can't see the ground. You have no reference. Even if you look out the window to one side or the other, I don't think you can really see where you're at. Well, actually, I don't like using that view. It's terribly unrealistic. But maybe if we do this, you know, yeah, you can really see that you know, you're pointing up at the sky, you can't really see where you're going. So you need some kind of instrumentation to help guide you. Okay, our, uh, uh, our, our distance off from this has come down, so we can start centering out our bank angle, because otherwise we'll overshoot and go the other way. We're only 900 kilometers from the base. Put in just a little bit more AOA. just for a moment. I'm going to take that back out because it shows we're coming up way short. Mock 13. We're down to 4,100 meters a second velocity. And everything's looking good. So we just have to uh, continue oh, forward until we slow down enough to take over manual control. And that occurs when you get to around 700 meters a second, something like that. If you try to take over manual control when you're still traveling at, you know, two or 3,000 meters a second, uh, you'll just end up blowing past the base and you'll have really high G g-force and it's just not the way to fly so Mark just let 11. the let the computer do its job let the attitude hold autopilot do its job centering the uh, bank angle because now we're slightly off to the right and just by point one it's fine now it's back to zero point zero Traveling at 3,000 meters a second, we're only uh, 400 kilometers out. So let's uh, increase our braking a bit.
break a little harder here at the end. Just for a moment though, because we don't want to come up short. Okay, bring the nose back down a little bit so we can have enough velocity when we get to our location to do our landing. A little bit of bank angle to the left because again we can see we're off. Just 300 kilometers to go. Mark eight. And our position here is coming back to zero. Let's go ahead and center the uh, bank angle back out. Two hundred eighty-eight kilometers from the base. Put in just a little bit of bank angle in the other Mark direction because we may have overdid it the other way. There we go. Just to straighten things out. Now uh, we can see this information up here, but if we zoom out one or two levels, we can see what it is that we're trying to do here. And actually, I don't have the hack set how I want. That's how I want it. I just want it open. Mark I don't six. like. I don't want to do the whole circuit around the base. It's... Okay, that being the case. Warning. RCS fuel low. System. And you can see, you know, even with the 100 meters, 120 meters per second left, we're using, you know, we used all that basically, and we might even run out. So, just a note to myself, kind of for future reference, I might even want to plan to arrive, you know, with 200 meters, 200 meters a second left, just for the atmospheric gliding portion. But uh, we're we're close enough. We'll we'll be fine. If we even if we run out of RCS, we'll be able to. Rotation. Uh, oops. Off. We'll be able to land. Okay, we can take over control here in just a couple seconds. Mock three. And watch what happens to the gravi uh, to the g-force when I do this. It's gonna probably spike. Okay, now this doesn't need to be up anymore. But I know that I need to rotate to the right because I can see in uh, glide slope there, I can see where the runway's at. Yeah, don't mean to be pulling G's quite that much. <laughs> so I think we're actually going to be better off going out past uh, the runway and then coming back in, so we'll land on 33 instead of 15. So now we're kind of flying parallel to the runway. In fact, let me just change that here. Okay, and then reset. And then again, it has the hack on some... I don't understand that whole... Mock 2. Okay, now let's turn in this way. I'm not sure, like in the real world, if there's like a bank limiter, because sometimes I tend to, you know, I just pitch way over on the side or even go more than 90 degrees onto the side. I'm not sure if that's like horribly unrealistic or if it's bad procedure. Pulling toward the runway a bit. Okay, 
There's the runway over there. Five thousand. And just bear with me while I land. Takes a little bit of concentration. You can set up the HCI in Orbiter. It's one of the instruments that it works like a, you know, like an, like in a flight sim or in real aircraft to let you know your position. Uh, I guess it'd be your horizontal position with the runway. But I don't. I've never really found it too terribly useful. For one thing, it only works when you're really close 3, to the runway. I think you have to be within 30 kilometers or something, which we are now, so it would it would work. But I just I don't have any problems lining up with the runway on Earth. But if you have problems, then you might want to tune in to the frequency 10, of the uh, HCI for the runway that you're landing on. Information. APU fuel 70%. You are cleared to land. Okay, we're all lined up with the runway. One thousand. Nine hundred. Eight hundred. Seven hundred. Six hundred. 500 400 gear down 300 warning gear is up gear down and locked 175 50 30 20 10 6 3 wheels down okay that's the landing and I think I landed slower than I usually do. <laughs> I'm usually landing at close to 200 meters a second, which, which I kind of think is probably a little ridiculous. So I'm going to try to start focusing miles. on slower landings in the future. And we'll, we'll stop. And let's see how we did. So for starters, we have uh, zero days and 12 hours of locks remaining. So it's good that we gave ourselves that two-day buffer because we ended up using most of it. That's good to note that two days is kind of the minimum buffer. We turn on external cooling. And let me turn off the APU for now. External cooling online. And let's look at let's look at burn time calculator to see exactly how much uh, delta V we have left. We have eight meters per second left. So in terms of fuel planning, it doesn't get much better than that, though I could argue that this is too low and that you should probably have more margin for error than that. But I specifically did this flight with what I, in my spreadsheet, I had it as 0% margin for error. So that being the case, our fuel planning just couldn't possibly be any more, any more precise than that. Now, what else do we want to look at? Uh, mission time... 238, uh, 12. And I'm just, I'm just thinking if there's anything else we want to review before we close out here. We've already looked at the fuel. We've looked at the locks. And I'm, okay, I'm going to say that's good enough. So the APU is also something to take into consideration. Um, when you arrive at your uh, destination, if it's a body like, you know, Earth or Mars, where you're going to be using atmospheric uh, controls, you need to make sure that you plan to have enough APU when you get there. You really don't use hardly any APU on takeoff. It's uh, I only used, I think, 12.9 kilograms. But once you arrive at your destination, you're going to use a lot of your APU. If you're using an expert configuration, then that can really be an issue. You can You can quickly run out of APU. So in that case, it's especially important to plan to arrive at your destination with an extra, 
you know, two or 300 uh, Delta V worth of Delta V so that instead of using the APU for, uh, instead of having the APU burning the whole time for surface controls, you can instead rely a little bit on the RCS that you brought with you. So that's going to conclude this series. I hope you liked it. And if you uh, did like it, please hit the like button down below. If you didn't like it, hit the don't like button and leave some comments. Let me know what you think. I don't know what the next uh, mission is going to be. And I don't know when I'm going to do it. But uh, whenever that is, I will see you in the next video.